I have something very cool to show you. Check this out. The Micro Freak by Arturia. I'm actually gonna work with this guy on my next single. So what I'm gonna show you today is how you can connect an external instrument in Cubase by keeping the same VST instrument workflow. All right, so now let's start this one up. This is a very cool one. I'm gonna connect my Micro Freak straight in Cubase and use it as a virtual instrument, you know, the same type of workflow. So how do I do this in Cubase? Let me show you. First, I'm gonna go on top and I'm gonna click on Studio and then go down to More Options and we're gonna open the MIDI Device Manager, and this is the key here. Then I'm gonna click on Install Device because this is what we need to do. We need to install our external instrument device. I'm gonna click there. Now, the list is gonna be a long one. If your device is there, just select it, but there's some chance also that your device will not be listed, like it happened to me at first. So I actually had to import it myself, and this is where import setup was useful. And then I just loaded my MicroFreak device. Now, if your device is not listed under installed device, you can check on the manufacturer's website or on a forum. This is where I actually found the MicroFreak MIDI device. And you can also create one from scratch if you want to by selecting the Define New option. Now at the bottom I have my selected device, which is this one that we just installed, and I'm gonna select MicroFreak as the output. Next, a very important step is to connect your external device into your audio interface. Now, my device has only one output. It's a mono synth. So what I need to do is to connect the output of this device straight into the input of my audio interface. So I'm going to plug this one into the first input of my AXR4 interface. Then I'm going to click on F4 to open the audio connections window. And then I'm going to make sure the external instrument tab is the one selected. I'm gonna click on Add External Instrument. I'm gonna name this one Micro Freak. Now for the returns, I'm gonna go and just add one to Mono Returns because the device is a Mono device. Then I'm gonna associate this connection to the MIDI device I created earlier. Click OK. And now it's gonna be time to select the first input where I actually plugged in the, uh, the output of my Micro Freak into and I'm good to go. Now I have a MIDI baseline right here on top that is on a MIDI channel. Now, if I want those notes to trigger a sound out of the Micro Freak, what I need to do is to create an instrument channel. So I'm gonna go on the right zone of my project window, click on Add Track Instrument, and on the list under External Plugins, I'm gonna have Micro Freak. I'm gonna select it, click on Add Track. And I'm gonna get this window where I'll be able to adjust the return gain level and also manually adjust the delay. But Cubase already takes care of delay compensation. Now I can play a sound coming from my external device from any MIDI controller that I have connected on my computer. So I just need to click on the input routing and select the controller I wanna work with. So for this one, I'm gonna use my Arturia Keylab Essential 61, which is this one right here. Now, if I look on top, I have the open device panels, okay? And that layout uh, came with the, uh, the media device that I installed earlier. Then I have preset 152. Those are actually all the sound presets that I have on my external device. So I can choose a sound straight from the device itself or straight from this option here. Now in my case, the media device patch that I used did not include all the, uh, the sound preset names for some reason. But if you're using a device that is listed, under the media device panel, chances are you will have access to all those preset names. So if like me, you loaded the media device that doesn't have the name of all the presets, you can actually go back into uh, more options and media device manager and write down those names manually by clicking on open device. You click on top on device and you will have patch banks. And this is where you'll be able to write down all the sound patches manually like I did for some of them. Now, this is a long procedure, so it takes patience, but it's worth it to do so. And the next time you'll go under Program Selector, you will see those patch names listed. So let's select one preset and test it out, you know, to make sure I have some sound coming out of my external device triggered by my MIDI controller. That's perfect, that's good, awesome. 
Okay, cool. So that works out very well. So what I'm going to do now is to bring down my uh, MIDI baseline on the Micro Freak channel. Then I'm going to select another preset that I know is going to work well with this baseline. Okay, cool, so that works very well. Now, on top of that, what I can do is to add some effects uh, that can be done easily. So I'm gonna create an effects channel track on this channel. Let's go with a delay, come back kid, that's awesome. So there you go, I'm gonna create a stereo uh, effect. Now this effect is a stereo delay, which is gonna work well with the Micro Freak that is mono. So let's try this out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce this MIDI performance in audio. I'm going to click on edit, go down to uh, render in place, click on render settings. Let's check what we have here. So I'm going to click on, uh, make sure that channel settings is selected. I'm good with that. Micro Freak Base is going to be the name of the file and I'm going to click on render. As you can tell, everything has been rendered in real time because I'm using an external device. All right, so that's perfect. So if we listen to what we have here. And the cool thing about render in place is I can keep the routing also, um, the signal sent to my, uh, my delay, which is great. So that has been kept. So now I can use the Micro Freak with another sound on another MIDI performance if I want to, which is great. There you go, my friend. This is how you can connect your external instrument in Cubase and keep the same VST instrument workflow. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave everything down below and don't forget to share, to like, and to subscribe to this channel. Until next time, take care and see you.